Some of you have asked me about Japanese keyboards. Well, look at this. This is a Japanese keyboard. You'll see that they have all the kana keys. They have kanji change keys. It's pretty complicated looking, but it looks awesome. And I think you're gonna wanna want one, right? Guess what? You don't need one. And even Japanese people don't need one. And I living here in America don't have one. And I've never had one yet. I've written 13 Japanese textbooks, right? So how do we do that? That's what we're gonna talk about today on Japanese typing from zero. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is in your Windows search, you're going to type language, okay? And language settings will pop up. From here, we're going to click add language and you can search for Japanese and then simply click next. Now you can go ahead and look at these if you want. There's a way to make your entire language of Windows in the Japanese, which is actually really cool if you're trying to learn and you wanna force yourself to be in a situation, but we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna to just leave all the, the, the default settings and we're gonna click install, okay? Now, after a few moments down here, you'll notice it now has an English option. It says ENG, okay? So if we go ahead and wait for that, it's gonna pop up Japanese here. It's gonna download all of the, things it needs to do to work, but we can already probably do this now. So we're gonna open up Word. This is not just for Word, this is for any program in your machine. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just select Japanese. And now on this keyboard with doing nothing else, I'll be able to type Japanese. Now there's one thing we might need to do. If you see a little A down here, that means you're in English input, okay? You're not gonna type any Japanese with this, okay? So it's Japanese keyboard, but typing English, okay? Now, if we click this down here, it switches to this little ah, this hiragana ah. And once we're there, watch this, it's really cool. Once I type in A, an ah pops up. Once I type in I, E, for E, U, O. I'm typing it just like it is in Romaji, okay? If I wanna type ka, I have to type the K first, and it's waiting for me to type the next thing. Watch when I type it. Now, this little line that you see underneath the Ka, this is the, I'm not yet done with this. So if I kept hitting space here, it would go through kanji that I could choose. Now, the way that this works, this is called an input method editor, an IME is if you always choose this kanji, eventually it will move it up the list for you. But in the very beginning, the most commonly used kanji will be up at the top, okay? For the particular sentence that you're doing. Now, it actually helps if you have more in the sentence for Japanese to come up properly. So for example, if I wrote, if I wrote neko, it could be a cat, it could be katakana, it could be faces with cats. There's so many cool things that could pop up. Even this cat here pops up, okay? and all of these other things that, God bless you if you can read them, okay? This is sound child, I don't know what that means, it means something though, all right? Now, if I said though, neko to inu, it kinda knows, it didn't give me any other options, did you see that? It gave me one option, okay? Now if I kept going, I could force it into other options, but the moment you start doing that and you start accepting it, you are gonna make Windows think that's what you want, and the next time you try to do it, you might be wrong, all right? And then you just hit, Enter. Enter accepts what you have. That's the basics. Now let's do a little bit of shortcut help, okay? So right now you saw that in order for me to get into Japanese mode, I clicked this and then I selected my keyboard. While you can just click it on the screen, which a lot of people do, that's there's no shame in that. There's a quicker way to do it. It is start key plus space. Watch this. And now I'm in, I can just cycle through whatever language. You could have Chinese, you could have Korean and you would just cycle through all the languages. Another way to do it, is Alt and Shift, same thing, okay? And then once you're on it, you'll notice that now again, we're still in Japanese mode within Japanese mode, but if I wanna switch to English mode, I can do Alt plus tilde. So Alt, tilde, Alt, oops, I gotta do it quicker than that. Alt, tilde, okay, see that? Now we're switching in and out and in and out, okay? All right, let's say your name is Akira, okay? So I'll type out Akira, and I want Akira to be in katakana. For some reason, I want it in katakana. But I don't want to go through a million different kanji to get to it. Look at how far I have to go to get to it. 
okay? Instead, when I type Akira, I can hit F7 and boom, it switches it to Katakana. F6 will switch it back. Then you have other options for half sizes. This is called half size Katakana. And you have full size English lettering. I don't know what 10 does. I think that's just normal. F10 is just normal. F11 just accepts it, all right? Now, let me show you one thing that might mess you up here. If you right click on this, there are other modes you can get into. There's full width katakana. There's full width al alphameric. There's all of these. So for example, if I went into full width katakana, now a little ka will be there. And now when I type K-A, it automatically goes to kana. So that might be if you're typing a lot of katakana, you might want to do that, but I never use it. I 100% uh, would be in trouble if that was my the case. So I like to stick in hiragana. All right, so now I'm going to show you a few things that are helpful when you're typing in Japanese. So one is, if you need a quick arrow, you can just type migi and then go through arrows. Isn't that cool? And you can select them. I do this all the time. Now I will warn you, I do it so much that when I type migi, the first thing it gives me is an arrow. It doesn't give me the kanji that I would like. Okay, that's gonna happen to you too. If you wanna do it with uh, left, you can do hidari. Okay, same thing. All sorts of options. You can do kao and get faces. Okay. If you can do, you can do music note with ompu. Okay. All sorts of music. There's a lot of things that I don't even know. If you find really cool things like this, post it down in the comments so that people can actually use your uh, suggestions, all right? All right, a couple more important things that you're gonna need. If you want to type a small tsu, let's say we have a word like gakko. If we're in Japanese mode, we just type G-A-K-K-O-U. Now we've got gakko. The little tsu came up all by itself automatically. But what if I wanna do a small tsu by itself? You can type L-T-S-U or l TU will bring that up and even XTU or XTSU. The S is not needed. Okay. And you can do this, believe it or not, for other letters. If I want a small A, here's a normal A. L A is a small A. Sometimes that happens in, for example, constructions like so kana. You type it like that. So kana. It just shows it as a trailing, right? I can do it with not all of the letters, but most of the all of the A, E, U, O's can, but like an L, K, A doesn't work. If I do L, K, A, oh, it did it. Ah, this is because in Katakana, this is a common character. But if we did Ki, it won't work. See, it won't work. It won't work with a Ku either, all right? But this is common in a lot of uh, construction. So like, for example, Ikagetsu uses it when you go to Kanji. There, that's what, that's what we're typing when we type L, K, A. Oh, a bonus, bonus, guys. All right. Now, let me show you one thing. If you're typing a lot of mixed English and Japanese, I highly recommend that you go into your settings right here. There's a separate settings you need to get into, general, okay? And you need to make your space. This is just a thing for me, but it, would, it probably will irritate you too. If you do it based on current input mode, when you're in Japanese, it's gonna do this big space. It's gonna do a Japanese full width space. What you really want, in my opinion, is the half width space. Let me show you what happens when you do it based on input mode, okay? So if you do it on input mode and you're typing something in Japanese and you hit a space, it's this big space. But when you're in English, it's this space, right? So if we do it in the other mode and we're gonna set our space to always half width, this is just something I recommend. Now you can put a normal space in the middle, okay? That's just something that if you're learning Japanese, sometimes it helps, all right? Bonus information, okay? Now that we're sitting here and we're able to type Japanese, let's go ahead and just type that, that inu to neko thing again. Inu to neko, okay? Now, watch this. Let me show you my tabs here. Okay, so if we're in Word, even though you're not in Japanese Word, even though you're not running a Japanese version of Windows, there's gonna be this little icon here called phonetic guide. If I click this, it will show me how to read the kanji. So now if I just click okay, I now have furigana on top of any kanji that I want. And you can even customize it if you want. I don't know why you would, but there might be a reason where you wanna say inu or neko. Now you have 
this for your friends that don't know hiragana or katakana all right guys like the video even if you hated it thanks for watching see you next time